All right, we're going to do another work kinetic energy theorem problem. This time, there's going to be friction and we're on an incline. So I have a block of mass m at the top of an incline. It's going to slide down that incline, speeding up until it reaches a final speed at the bottom of 2.8 meters per second. The incline is 1.2 meters high and has an angle of 30 degrees. And we want to figure out what is the coefficient of friction between the surface and the block. All right, so I'm going to do a one or a work kinetic energy theorem problem. So I start at point one up at the top, I end at point two at the bottom. I also have to choose where is the height going to be zero. So my height is going to be zero down here at the bottom. I always want to choose the lower of my two points as height equals zero. So next I'm going to you know, cancel stuff out of my work kinetic energy theorem problem. So work in is zero because there's no applied force pushing that block down the slope. Work done by friction, there is friction, so there is going to be work done by friction. That's where that mu value we're trying to solve for is. At the bottom, it is moving, so there is kinetic energy two. At the top, it's not moving, so there is no kinetic energy one. UG2, the potential energy down here at the bottom is zero. We do have potential energy up at the top because it's a height of 1.2 meters, and there's no springs involved. We're now going to, you know, rewrite this equation. So work done by friction equals K2 minus UG1. Because we're not solving for any of those energies or works, we're going to substitute in. So work done by friction is negative force of friction because remember these are directions that we're concerned about here. So I have to have the negative sign on there because the force of friction is opposite the direction of the displacement is equal to K2, which is going to be 1 half mv squared, where v is the bottom speed, minus mgh, where h is the height it starts at. So we do have force of friction, so we're going to substitute in for that. So I have negative mu times the normal force times s equals 1 half mv squared minus mgh. Normal force, I need to solve for that in my y direction. So I have my axes rotated here. I'm going to draw my free body diagram. So I have gravity, I have normal force, I have friction. The sum of the forces in the y direction is going to be zero because it's not accelerating off of that incline or into that incline. So I will need to resolve mg into components. This angle right here is the same as my 30 degrees. And so I have mg cosine of theta here mg sine of theta here. So in my y direction, I do have normal force minus mg cosine of theta. So I have normal force minus mg cosine of theta equals zero. So the normal force is equal to mg cosine of theta. So now I can make that substitution over here. So I have negative mu times mg cosine of theta times s is equal to 1 half mv squared minus mgh. And so if you're wondering how am I going to get those masses over there because I don't know them, if we continue on we see that we do end up with a mass in every term that we can get rid of. Now there's one other substitution we do have to make here and that is the displacement is this side of my triangle. The hypotenuse is my displacement. So I need to figure out what that is. Well, I'm going to use a sine function because I do know the opposite side from the angle. And so I'm left with um, 1.2 the opposite side divided by the sine of 30 will tell me what that hypotenuse is. So now I do know what S is. S is going to be, well, sine of 30 is a half, so S is going to equal 2.4 meters. So now I do know G, theta, S, V, G, and H. I know all my variables, so I just need to solve for mu. So I'm going to get rid of the negative sign over to the other side. I'm going to divide the g and cosine theta and s over to the other side as well. So mu is going to equal um, gh minus 1 half v squared, all divided by g cosine of theta times s. Plug in my numbers, and I end up with a mu of 0.385, um, which is a reasonable coefficient of friction. And again, there are no units on the coefficient of friction. That's it.